Hi, I'm Robbie Cummy, and yes, I have been on a boat for a year, for over a year now. So I thought it was about time that I made some videos and share with you what I have learned and uh, continue on the journey with you by my side. Will you join me, please? Join me, please, please join me. Join me. Join me. We have a disclaimer before we get started. This is just the way I do things. It's not the right way of doing things. So with that in mind, Let's boat. Is that, is that what you say? Let's go. Ah! At the moment, I'm in Runcorn on the Bridgewater Canal, which is the oldest one in Britain. The most amazing thing about this place is it's actually got some really incredible bridges that go across the Mersey. Um, but the rest of it's not that great. Um, most of the shops just seem like they're a bit r run down really. There's plenty of charity shops. There's an Iceland. The pubs are a little bit... well, at least the pubs are cheap. I went in one the other day, one pound a pint, you can't argue with that. So... <laughs> We're gonna actually get involved now and uh, get going, start the engine up and move the boat. This is my old Lister engine. So let's just check the oil. Uh. <laughs> Filming on a boat is ridiculous because there's no space. So it's just like a car really, you just check the dipstick, exactly the same. That's looking good. If I did need to put oil in this, I actually have to unscrew this cap, or either of these really, and pour it straight in through the cylinders there. It's a two cylinder. Lister air-cooled engine. I think most cars, they don't have, you don't have to check the gearbox oil. With this, you do. Right, the gearbox is actually connected to the engine. So if something goes wrong with this, that's it. So, you know, you have to lift the whole thing out and get it sorted. It's not, not, not a separate part. I've got my um, dipsticks here. So there's one there, and another one on the other side. I mean, all engines are different, but this one just happens to have two. And let's just check that. I don't do this every time the boat sets off. You've just got to use your common sense, really. Right. So that's looking good. To put oil in the gearbox, I'd unscrew that knob there and fill it up for that chamber, and unscrew and fill here for that chamber. Right now, it's time to do another check, which is the weed hatch. Is in. I'm just going to undo it. I did actually have to use a hammer to start that because you don't really want it finger tight, you want it really, really tight on there. Because this is to stop, allow you to get to the propeller, but also to stop water coming in. If you left this off, the propeller's going round, then you're just going to flood the boat. Hello. <laughs> there we go. So I'll that out. And this is the this is the fun bit. Gonna get my hand in there and see if there's anything around the propeller. Oh well, luckily for me this time there wasn't anything, but there's usually a plastic bag or a load of weeds down there that you have to pull out, otherwise it'll stop you from going at regular speed and really put a strain on the engine. That back. Secure it with this. Some some people like to do this every time they leave the boat, every time every time they set off on the boat. But I only nowadays I'm only doing it if I know that I've been through a patch where it's got loads of plastic bags hanging around, or there's loads of weeds, or if I notice that the engine slowed down. So it's got easy judgment. Keep it in place. Right, so everything's set, so we're ready to go. Right, 
the middle rope, always the last one to untie and the first one to tie when you actually land and moor up. So I'm just going to push the boat out, literally, <laughs> and get back on the end. Here we go. I was just talking to someone in the marina there um, about this canal and apparently it's not owned by the Canal and River Trust at all, it's owned by Hill Holdings Company or something like that, so they basically own the Trafford Centre I think, places like that, and uh, all the canal and that marina. And that was the only place where I could have got water on this so far on this trip. Normally you'd be able to go pretty much anywhere and just go to the water point, fill up there. I know a lot of boaters that will just go out really early in the morning and they'll, they'll finish by three o'clock. It was a shame because you miss all of this. Check that out. see any rings anywhere or anything, I might have to stick my pins in somewhere, but you don't want to do that when it gets too dark, because you can't see what you're doing. My head torch is not the best. Come on. Will Robbie make it to his mooring? Find out on another episode of Canal Journeys. Um, no, I did make it. This is me just slowing the engine down, and yeah, just about to jump off. With the centre rope ready. We had the engine in reverse there, so that's going back into neutral. And then, time to jump off with that rope. Just cut the fuel supply by pulling on your knob. <laughs> Quick check up to the meters that aren't saying anything at all, they're broken. But we have made it. We've got to our destination, and I'm mooring up there rather quickly. Oh, good, good work, Robbie. Good, good. Look at that! Whipping that tiller arm off there and stashing it away so it can't get like nicked by anyone. It's brass, quite expensive brass. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for joining me on the first trip. See you again next time. <laughs>